Hi there, and welcome again to the State of the Union, our series of daily broadcasts in which we examine issues pertaining to the word of the Lord saying, tell my people to return to me. Tell my people to return to me. <clears throat> now today is the seventh, seventh day in a series in which we have been looking at matters pertaining to this one thing. Psalm 16 verse 8. I have set the Lord always before my face. But before I say anything else, let me take us on a journey through the scripture so that perhaps we can appreciate some things when we come back to conclude. Matthew chapter 25, starting to read from verse 31. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory, and before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them from one another, as a shepherd divided his sheep from goats. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on his left then the king shall say unto them on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungered, and you gave me meat. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. Naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer, Answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee and hungered and fed thee, or thirsty and gave thee drink? Or when saw we thee a stranger and took thee in, or naked and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick or in prison and came unto thee? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as you have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, you have done it unto me. Now that's the first piece of scripture. He says that there will be a time, or there's coming a time where the Lord will sit upon the throne of his glory and he will separate the nations into sheep and goat nations. The sheep nations will be on his right hand, the goat nations will be on his left. And the Bible characterizes the sheep nations as the righteous. that they took care of him when they took care of the needy among the brethren. Now, in Matthew chapter 22, there is another issue. Starting from verse 15, it, it reads, Then went the Pharisees and took counsel how they might entangle him in his talk. And they sent out unto him their disciples with the Herodians, saying, Master, we know that thou art true and teachest the way of God in truth. Neither carest thou for any man, for thou regardest not the person of men. Tell us, therefore, what thinkest thou? Is it lawful to give tribute unto Caesar or not? But Jesus perceived their wickedness and said, Why tempt ye me, you hypocrites? Show me the tribute money. And they brought unto him a penny. And he said unto them, Whose is this image and superscription? They say unto him, Caesar's. Then said he unto them, Render therefore unto Caesar the things which are Caesar's, and unto God the things which are God's. And then there is another story. In Matthew chapter 7, reading from verse 21, please take note of all these stories. 
Matthew chapter 7, verse 21. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many, shall, many will say unto me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have we and have, have cast out de devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you that walk iniquity. I never knew you, you that walk iniquity. And then in Romans chapter 8, verse 29, it is written, For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Perhaps you are wondering, where is he going with all these stories? Perhaps you haven't noticed that these are stories pertaining to a judgment, sort of, or a kind of judgment. By judgment, I mean discerning between uh, any number of things. In the first story, Matthew chapter 25, it says that the good Lord will separate the nations into sheep nations and into goat nations. And the yardstick would be how they treated Jesus by what they, by the good that they did to the least of the brethren. Let's call that taking care of the needy. But he said it will be how they treated him. So the question would be, what have you done with Jesus? How do you recognize Jesus? He said, whatever you do to the least of the brethren, you do unto me. So the sheep nations were separated from the goat nations on the basis of what they did with Jesus in the face of the brethren. But in the second example, The separation was between Caesar and God. Is it, is it right to give tribute to Caesar? That's like saying, is it proper to pay taxes? And Jesus asked them a very simple question. Whose image is on this coin? And they agreed that it was Caesar's image that was on the coin. And he said, give unto Caesar that which already carries his image. Because if it carries his image, it belongs to him. Then the third example. He says, not all that say unto me, Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom on this certain day of separation, or if you like, judgment. That many will say to him, Lord, Lord, did we not cast out demons in your name? Did we not do mighty works in your name? Have we not prophesied in your name? And every time I tell the story, I like to ask this question. Who are the people who use the name of the Lord? One, to prophesy. Two, to cast out dem de de devils. And three, to do wonderful works. Who are the people who use the name of Jesus? Yes, I know today, in fact, I heard the story. A joke, I know. But they're trying to make a point. You know, have you heard the, st the statement 
By special arrangement, even the devil will see God. By special arrangement. You can ask Job about that. Now, but there's this story, a joke I know. It says that a certain very ugly fellow got into heaven. Oh, well, got into hell. And when the devil saw him, the devil, in his shock, reacted by exclaiming, Blood of Jesus! As if to say, can a man be this ugly? In other words, the devil exclaimed, Blood of Jesus. Now, all over the place today, everybody is using the name of Jesus. Everybody is. We know that. But now here's Jesus saying, that he will profess to some people in that day, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. So it's no longer enough just to use the name of Jesus. Everybody these days uses the name of Jesus. In fact, sometimes when I listen to some people preaching and they start to use that name, I try to listen very carefully whether they are calling the name of Jesus or Jesus or something that sounds like that. Deception abounds. God says, tell my people to return to me. There's coming a day, there's coming a time, a season, where God will separate those who are his from those who are not. That's the parable of the sheep, good sheep nations and good nations. It's also the parable about the coin and the image of Caesar on it. It says, give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar and give to God what belongs to God. It's also reflected in this story of where Jesus says, he's going to tell some people on that day, depart from me, you workers, I don't know you. But in Romans chapter 8, verse 29, we get something of an understanding about the yardstick of separation, and which is probably why God is saying to his people to return to him. In Romans chapter 8, verse 29, he says, For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate, to be conformed to the image of his son, that he, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. So the point of God, the whole thing comes down to, to be conformed to the image of the son. Why is that? Why do we need to be conformed to his image? And then in a few minutes, I'll answer another question. How do we get conformed to the image of the Son? Why do we need to be conformed to the image of the Son? Because in the parable about paying tribute to Caesar, the point of departure was a simple question. Whose image is on the coin? Give to Caesar what belongs to God, uh, what belongs to him, and give to God what belongs to him. So if the image of the song is on you, then you will be reckoned with the song. If the image of the sun is not on you, by son I don't mean the brother of the moon. I mean son, S-O-N. If the image of the Son of God, Jesus, is in you, then you will be identified or identifiable with Jesus. Simple. Why is that? The Bible tells us First, in Romans chapter 2, verse 16, 
uh, well, starting from 15. It's a which show the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness, and their thoughts they mean, while accusing or else excusing one another. In the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ, according to my gospel. So there is a judgment that is going to be about Jesus Christ. It's going to be by Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is going to be the yardstick of some judgment on some day. And in Acts chapter 17, verse 29, it says, For as much then as we are the offspring of God, and now this is where it concerns the church, for as much then as we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the Godhead is like unto gold or silver or stone, graven by art and man's device. And the times of this ignorance God wintered, but now commanded all men everywhere to repent, or if you like, to return to him. And then in verse 31, because he has appointed a day in the which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he had ordained, whereof he had given assurance unto all men in that he had raised him from the dead. <coughs> Excuse me. So the yardstick of measurement, of discerning between this and that, the yardstick of separation is going to be the one that God raised back from the dead, which is Jesus. So there seems like there's going to be a day where we will all be examined one after the other. And the bottom line will be, can I see Jesus in you? Bottom line. Bottom line. God is going to judge by the one he has raised back from the dead. God is going to judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ. So right now he's working towards ensuring that we are all made conformable to the image of the Son, Jesus Christ. So that on that day, there will be no talking. Jesus said, bring me a coin. And he asked them, whose image and superscription is on this coin? And they said, Caesar. And he said, give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. Why? In Ephesians chapter 1 verse 14, we are told that after we became born again, God put his seal on us. The Holy Spirit of promise. What is the job of the Holy Spirit? Inter alia, after all said and done. To take off what belongs to Jesus and reveal it to us. Why? So that in imbibing it, we are prayed like him. But the issue is, is that true of you? Because God is going to look and he will be looking for his son, Jesus, so to say. Are we getting there now? You see all these stories in the Bible? They are all going somewhere. There will be a judgment of the nations. And some will be called sheep nations, and some will be called goat nations. And if I have read the scripture correctly, it says, and the sheep nations. It says, verse 37 of Matthew chapter 25, then shall the righteous answer him, saying, when saw we and hungered, when saw we thee and hungered, and we gave thee, 
and the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as you have done it unto the least of these my brethren, you have done it unto me. But in verse 44, after talking about the goat nations, verse 44, it says, Then shall they answer him, saying, Lord, where saw we? Do you see the difference? When it was the sheep nations, the Bible referred to him, referred to them as the righteous. After Jesus talked about the goat nations, the Bible refers to them as they. It doesn't call them righteous. So the sheep nations are the righteous, and the goat nations are not. And the yardstick of, or the point of departure is what did you do with Jesus? Can I say that Jesus is in the air? He's the yardstick of measurement of God. Everything about God is by Jesus. He is the image of the invisible God. He is all that may be known or related with that is called God. And the Bible says, in our opening scripture, I have set the Lord before my face always. And 2 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 18 tells us, But we all, with open face, beholding as a glass, as in a glass, the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory. So we, we are changed into the image of the glory of, of the Lord, when we set him before our face and continually behold him. To set him before your face is to make him the everything about you. So that the more you gaze upon him, the more you are transformed into the glory of the image that you are gazing at. Now that's how we become like him. The more we participate, the more we partake, we are changed into what he is. Such that on that day, when he says some, to some people, depart from me, I do not know you, you workers of iniquity, he is going to say to some others, welcome into the kingdom of my father. You faithful servants. Or if you like, you righteous nations. In Malachi chapter 3, and I'll close with this. In Malachi chapter 3, we are told that the Lord is coming in judgment. He is coming like a refiner's fire. He is coming like the fuller's soap. Fuller, that is the dry cleaner or the washman. He's coming like a refiner's fire. Why is the refiner's fire significant? Because we have to understand how the refiner does his job. He puts the metal, the lump of raw metal in the fire. After a while, he takes that thing with a pair of tongs, I guess, and he looks at it and he examines it. And the way he will know that the metal is pure and ready is when he can see his image, when he can see a reflection of himself in the thing, when he can see a reflection of himself in the thing. Can Jesus see himself in you? Can Jesus, in sending somebody to the town or the city or the wherever, hamlet, ward, village, wherever you are, can Jesus, in sending somebody to that community, say to the person, go to XYZ Street, I have a man there, and that that will be you? Can he see something of himself in you? Because that is going to be the yardstick for judgment. His image in us. And the more we gaze upon the Lord, the more we are changed into the same image. 
From glory to glory means it's not a one-time job. The more you partake, the more you look like him. The more that piece of silver, raw silver, is in the fire or is put in the fire, the more the fire will burn out the dross from it. And there will come a time that the luster of that metal will come forth and the refiner will look at the thing and he will see his face in the metal and he will say, yes, this one is ready. He says, tell my people to return to me. There is a reason. There is a reason. This preacher is not just crooning because he likes the sound of his voice. This is one crying in preparing the way of the Lord. There is coming a time where the Lord will look and he will be looking for his reflection in you and me. Who knows? That might even be today. So he has sent somebody out now to say to his people, return to me. There's coming a judgment. There's coming a judgment. There's coming a day of visitation. I'm not necessarily talking about that final one where it's too late for anybody, one way or another. I'm talking about a here and now judgment where he will reward good for good and evil for evil. Good for those who have been faithful to him. Those who have stayed with him. And evil for evil for those workers of iniquity whom he must ask to depart from his sight because he doesn't know them. Depart from my house. Depart from a place of relevance in my house. Those people who he whipped out of the temple, remember? They were in the temple like today. They are in the church. But there must come a day of judgment where the Lord must drive them out so that the lost must resurface among his people. So he says now, tell my people to return to me. There is a work at foot. There is a work afoot. Something is going on. Will you not know it? Or will you be left behind? Will you be among those whom to whom he says, depart from me, I don't know you? Will you be among those who bear the superscription of Caesar? Because there's gold written all over you. There's silver written over all over you. The apostle said, I have laid the, as, as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation which is Jesus Christ. Be careful what you build on it. Gold, silver, hair, stubble. For some of us, on that day of examination, what they will see will be gold. Because you have been pursuing gold with your time. It says, be careful what you build on the foundation that is laid. Because it will be examined by fire. And if the reflection of the Lord is not seen in it, it will be rejected. He says, tell my people to return to me. Will you return this day? So that you don't be one of those who have to be tossed aside. Who have to be tossed aside. The church seems full now. But can you cast your minds to the seaside? A man has just returned from fishing, maybe with his men or with his sons, like the sons of Zebedee. And they are sorting the catch. Full catch. And then they start to sort it. Can you imagine the consternation and disgust, the frustration and disappointment in a full bag of catch, so to say? Only perhaps 10% are really fish. The others are all kinds of weed, all kinds of sea, sea animals or whatever. They didn't go out for those they went out for fish. They are fishermen. So what do you think they would do to those things that are not fish? They throw them back into the water. It's fish they want. And I'll leave you on that note. God says, tell my people to return to me. 
the way out is to cast the Lord upon your face always. Put him before your eyes. David said, I have hidden your word in my heart. Why did he put, why didn't he hide the word in his armpit, for example? Why in his heart? Because that's the seat of life. So he says, from there, your word answers me in judgment in his heart. The word of God is responding to his every thought and imagination in his heart. The same person said, I have cast the Lord always before me. And the Bible says, in that you are transformed to the image of the Lord. So when he comes, he will see his reflection in you. God bless you and we'll see you again tomorrow. Still on the state of the union.